Well, I think there's some people that are fat and they love it. But that's and proud they're proud to be who they are. Yeah, that's I proud think of their yeah. body. You shouldn't be proud of being that overweight. Well, why to be not? Proud of. What's a hot take again? <laughs> Audience submitted question or prompt. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's such thing as being too jacked. I mean, you, you can never be too big, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can never be too big, bro. Like, hey, you can just switch too. I mean, there you go. I am big compared to what I used to be, but not enough to what I want to be. Yeah, you're going to want more. You'll never be satisfied. Never. Right now. <laughs> never. You'll never be satisfied. People do take it to an extreme, like the people that injected their arms with like... Syntho oil? That, and then like yeah. the guy's bicep busted open, like oh, okay. crazy things like yeah. that. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, that's that. extreme. That's and, different. And you know, and they can't, you know, wipe their butt on the toilet. Like that's another form of body dysmorphia. You feel like you're never big enough. I don't think so. Bodybuilding is the extreme. There's nothing wrong. It's never going to be too much. I would be considered one of the larger ones, and I don't think I'm larger at all. I can get much bigger. Male bodybuilders have small penises. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to hear this so, explanation. All right, I want to go ahead and start this off. I'm speaking as far as myself. <laughs> that's, that's a disagree, but as far as other bodybuilders, I can't speak for them. I've never dated a bodybuilder, so I have never seen the goods of a male bodybuilder. <laughs> hey, if you're a guy and you're backstage getting a tan, you know, bodybuilders have to put a sock on. Of course, you're going to look around, you know. That sock is full. It must mean something. <laughs> One of the biggest male members I know, because it's just so obvious when he steps on stage, Bo Lewis. He's huge down there, you can't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> when you are a caliber above, people try to find a way to bring you down to their level. It's like, you know, little penis energy. Like when you see guys in like the flashy cars, all the designer clothes and all that, you're like, what are you compensating for, dude? That's true. <laughs> yeah. I build my body to get girls or guys. Oh. I love you, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I'm being brutally honest right here. Uh, I was always the skinny kid, so in the beginning was that, but now I have a girlfriend, so no, that's not the point anymore. <laughs> I think I bodybuild because I want to scare him away. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to ask a question. It was because the girls liked you regardless of the body or not, right? Because girls don't care about muscles and stuff. Yeah. Like they really... I personally think that girls like dad bods more than fit guys. <laughs> Spot on. Fact, a lot of bodybuilders, they get more compliments than guys than girls. It's because it's a, it's a turn off for a lot of girls. They think, yeah. you know, when a guy is too big or too shredded or too vascular, it kind of looks freaky or scary to them. I care. I watched my man go from being 160 pounds to over 200 pounds, pure solid muscle. And like my physical attraction just went, oh my God, look at you. You're like two feet wide. This is amazing. Wow. I, I like them dad bods. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's the next. I look down on people who are out of shape. Three, two, one, go. I would never judge a person for being out of shape. It's just for me, I started off in the military and then when you become a mom, you know, it's a slippery slope to getting fat and to getting chubby and getting that mom body. And so I know how it is to be out of shape and I know that that needs a lot of tender love and care and nurturing to get yourself out of that mode of not being fit again. I mean, people know when they're out of shape. They don't need to be told. They need to be loved and nurtured to do the right things. Um, I was bullied in high school. I was a 190 pound freshman. I didn't even speak English. I moved here as an immigrant. I didn't like how I looked. You know, I was made fun of in PE, and that was up to me to change that. So you can do it. You're just choosing not to it. So you're basically talking about specifically if someone says they want something, but they don't challenge themselves, they don't try. Those are the ones that you're like, oh, I'm upset with you. Kinda, yeah. I see someone that's just playing video games all day, eating potato chips and not doing anything else in their life. I'm like, all right, you know, you could be doing something else for your health. We all should be productive in a certain type of way. Mm but they're the ones that are gonna make the most gains. You make the little steps, you walk every day, you change your diet, you mm -hmm. lift more. I wouldn't want to be discouraging to those people because- Not at all, yeah. not discouraging, motivating them, you know? Like, I would want them to do something for sure. good for themselves, you know? Obviously, yeah. You should not be proud to be fat. 
Three, two, one, go. <laughs> um, I mean, when people hear the word fat, it has such a negative connotation to it. When, like, why? I don't think fat is necessarily a bad thing. Like, being unhealthy is a bad thing, but no, there's but a lot of- pride. Fat is unhealthy, hmm? though. We're talking about pride. Of being proud of being that size. Being accepting of yourself as fat and being proud to be fat. You should love yourself in all forms, but you shouldn't be proud of being that overweight and unhealthy and it's nothing well, why to be not? proud of. Yeah, it's not it's something really to be proud of. It's really nothing to be proud of. It's, it's something to accept and love yourself for and not beat on yourself for. I think but you it's can not be something... proud of it. There's some people that are fat or overweight and they love it. No, that's and proud, proud to be who it. they are. That's proud of their yeah. body. Like, oh, look how much I can eat. Oh, I can put my fat on top of a, a car. Now this coming up on the layers that I'm growing and that is accumulating on my body that's causing me to have heart disease and all these other things, that's the pride that I have. Like being proud to be the thousand thousand pound woman well, yeah. is that you that, getting government checks and things like that. That's an extreme. It's, Fat comes in all different shapes and sizes. Like if you're still healthy on the inside and you like what you got, work it. Yeah, I feel like the problem is like when you are so proud of being fat and then like you become like an influencer that you influence like younger generations to like have those uh, unhealthy life standards and say that's just like body positivity. Well, there's some influencers that are fat, but they do work out, you know, on their platform, they're doing yoga and they're dancing. And so they're active, but they're just overweight. Going back to the thing, it's not like something to be proud of at all, only because, trust me, they would not want to be fat. And they claim, oh no, I'm happy, I'm embracing with what I have. No, if you could look a certain type of way differently, you would choose that over this any other day. Well, how do you know that they would choose a thinner oh. physique over a... Not necessarily a thinner physique, but you would want to look a little different. I know personally know a lot of people that are like that, and deep down they do break down and tell me, no, it's just like another way of them trying to make themselves happy and Again, it's totally okay, but it's not something to be proud of. You know, I don't know, it was a movie like Dodgeball, right? And it, like, it was like Ben Stiller character, he's like, if you don't hate yourself enough to do something about it, it's not, it's your fault. You know, funny, but it's just one of those things, like with Lizzo and everything else, she does work out. She does want to lose weight. She knows that's not healthy, but she still has a certain about, like, I am still going to be me, and I'm fabulous no matter if I'm 100 pounds or 400 pounds. I can understand and I can respect that, but she does have to belay the point that her heart is working over lower, bouncing that ass up and down. In a lot of ways, though, uh, bodybuilding, I mean, there's a lot of negatives to what we do, too, that we could be influencing other people negatively, you know, like weighing our food and always caring about every little gram that comes into our mm. mouth and like I'll take that putting that. your entire... I'll take one over the other. That fat around your heart, that fat around your intestines, around your stomach is dangerous. So taking pride in something that's just killing people like that... <sighs> okay. I have considered steroids. Three, two, one, go. The dark side, I go. I know. I'm ready for this one. I am so ready for this one. <laughs> Do you want three Yeah, I want three dogs, brother. I think in order to stay highly competitive, especially on the West Coast, it's almost half necessary to start using stuff. Because unfortunately, to get to the points that people are displaying, you need help. I definitely agree. I mean, this is a really touchy subject, but with all due respect for people who are natural, who don't obviously take anything, keep going. Um, the sad truth about bodybuilding is everyone you're going against is probably on stuff. I did my first show, Natural. I won that show, but the second show I got destroyed. And mm -hmm. I realized what time it was. Everyone's talking behind stage about this, that. If your goal is to be in that top 1%, to make it to the Olympian, you're gonna be going against people who are taking a lot of steroids, anabolics, and it's not gonna be a fair battle for you. It's just, it won't be. It makes a huge difference to you, for sure. Yeah, you, you do this sport because you wanna win, right? Of 
course. You're not going to go on stage just because you want to get second place, third place, last place. No, it's too expensive that's why, to that's just why go I, on stage for no reason. Yeah. So I said I respect the people who just want to go on there and be natural. Yeah. Respect for you. And, you know, well, that. that's what they have the natural leagues for, too. Yeah. There's drug-tested leagues that yeah. if you want to be within the people who do not and will not use these things, you yeah. can go into the natural league and be tested. I do completely agree with all that. Um, and again, I compete in the MPC, so that is not drug-tested. But I've come a few spots away from my pro card at nationals a few times being completely natural. And I'm not against taking drugs. I understand most people do. For those bigger divisions, it's a necessity. Like, you have to do it. But for bikini, I know that I can make it to that pro level being natural. It's just going to take me a little bit more time. And I, I take pride in that because, again, I got into this lifestyle because of the health benefits. For me, I just never thought about doing that because of like the long-term consequences that it may bring if not accompanied uh, by like a doctor or like a professional. So I always wanted to like stay natural. Um, but like if you're doing it in a healthy and safe way, then uh, you do you, I guess. I I just. Well, I, I, I have both experience from both sides, but I remember waiting and thinking about how small I was, and I was thinking about how I couldn't get that leanness, and I remember I wanted to be bigger, and I was thinking in my head, like, I could not freaking wait to find me a drug dealer so I can get on some steroids, because I wanted to be the biggest, I wanted to be the strongest, and I told anyone else, if you see me, and you see me with big muscles, you don't have to worry about asking, you don't have to worry about spreading rumors, because I am definitely 100% on something. It's not abuse. A lot of times when people talk about doing performance enhancing things, they want to talk about the MLB or the NBA, or the, I'm not in any of those things. This is self-care for me to take care of my body and for me to love what I'm doing with it. So it's not like something where you end up having this situation where you have roid rage or you have someone who's angry all the time. A person is an asshole, they're an asshole. It does, has nothing to do Facts. with what they take. So just being real. And I respect you being so transparent about it because a lot of them just try to say, oh, I'm natural. Like, I did this and you can do this too. And it's just like, no, like, why are you afraid? If you take PEDs, then just say that you do. I don't, I don't understand the whole taboo around it, and I think that needs to shift. But if more people amazing. talked about it, it would be less severe if people were more open about the safety and the care of it. Some people do abuse it, but it's just like when people abuse anything, alcohol, cocaine, drugs, anything. It's Amen. just being smart and being educated about it. Bodybuilding is good for my mental health. Three, two, one, go. So I have had like instances in my life where I've been like really down and depressed. And so gym and bodybuilding was one of the things that got me through. And it made me like forget my problems and just like focus all my rage and anger towards like hitting new PRs and stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bodybuilding definitely can be a mental relief to you, you know. That's your only you time where you really get to have when you're going to train. In you, a way. you learn your self-worth. Exactly, exactly, process. definitely. Because it's you versus you at the end of the day. That's yeah. how this sport is. It's, it's, it's a selfish sport, but it helps you mentally. It builds you up for sure. But the reason why I'm in the egg green lane and not in the strongly egg green lane is because I can never look at food the same. <laughs> <laughs> What's clean and what not, you can no longer just walk into a restaurant, look at a burger and fries and eat that. You know, yeah. you're always going to think, no, that has cheese, that has this, I can't digest that well, you know. But as far as bodybuilding itself, definitely helps you, yeah, yeah. mostly help. I feel my worst post-show because I get so lean going into my shows that coming out of them, I struggle mentally um, and emotionally with it because I am so and it's gonna sound ridiculous, uncomfortable with how I look right now. Ooh. So it is really good because it got me out of a rut that I was in, like bodybuilding saved my life, mm -hmm. but it also created a new problem. Yeah, the body dysmorphia post-show is real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it wasn't for bodybuilding, I can say almost undoubtedly that I would not be here right now. I was in a very abusive relationship Verbal, sexual, mental. Um, 
and I was in a very dark place. Um, and during that time, I started to get into working out, and I noticed like that it was giving me confidence and like an outlet. And the person that I was with was kind of getting intimidated. They told me straight to my face, if you compete, I will break up with you on the spot. You know, that's selling your body for sex. That's, that's what a slut does. And so I didn't end up doing it. Um, and mm. a few months after that, we broke up. Um, and that was probably the worst spot that I was in, coming out of an abusive relationship and like just being empty. Like for that period of time, that was the only person that I knew. And so I was in a dark place and I almost took my own life. And I remember one day I was like sitting in my car and I was gonna drive myself out to the beach and just walk into the ocean. Yeah. And wow. that was the day that I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Fuck you wow. to him and do a show. And I dedicated the next four months of my life to prepping for the show and that saved me. It gave mm. me like a purpose. It gave me that independence and that strength That's again. That's amazing, that's amazing. I just wanna say I'm really glad you're here because <laughs> I know you. that like what you're feeling and um, I've uh, gone through like breakup. There were like a few instances where I broke down like right in the middle of workout. I know it's embarrassing, but you know, uh, it got me through it. No, I'm on the same boat with you, man. You know, and it's just a constant battle in your mind just thinking to yourself. And I'm, I'm glad you're here, Sasha, by the way. Thank you. My body is the most important thing to me. Three, two, one, go. Mm, right here. Obviously, my family and God come first, and then there's my body, but especially if it's your dream to make it to the top and everything, it is your business, it is your investment that you gotta take care of constantly. Same, you know, when I'm on season, when I'm on competition, that's my borrowed time for myself. At six months, I'm being the most selfish that I can, you know? I'm not going anywhere, I'm not doing anything, I'm not eating out, but once I'm out of prep, then yeah, everything else comes first. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those things take a precedent. If I'm in prep, I'm sorry, like I'm not answering the phone, but if I'm out of prep and a friend calls and I was supposed to get a workout in that day, looks like I'm not going to the gym, she needs me. So. Yeah, yeah. This is my money maker. So I, I'm competing in three weeks. So this is, yeah, this is everything to me right now. So if I'm hurt or something feels funny, I'm making sure I'm taking special attention to it. People wanna go rollerblading or hiking or things like that. I can fall on a rock and scratch and break something before the show and then look like an idiot. So just no, no, this is, this is the time to be really focused, absolutely zero in on me. I love that. I feel like you need uh, your body to be healthy in order to have anything else. Of course, mental health is very important as well, but I feel like like once you're physically healthy, like your mind could be at ease. We're only given one body, and so I feel like we should take good care of it. I'm not, I'm not looking at it from a vanity perspective. Um, I'm looking at it from, my body is my temple, and like nothing feels better than being in shape. And there's like that quote out there like, oh, like nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Like nothing feels as good as making it to the top of that mountain or like kayaking for six hours straight and like still being able to keep going. Like that's, it's just such a great feeling. And that is a wrap. <laughs> yes. Group photo. Yeah. Oh.